It is the age-old battle of which one is the best dive watch of all time, the Blanc 150 Fathoms or the Rolex Submariner. In this video, I will be comparing the specifications and designs of these two iconic dive watches. But if you enjoy these type of watch battles, please consider subscribing as I have plenty more videos comparing different timepieces. The 50 Fathoms comes in a quite large 45mm case, whilst the Submariner features a more modest 41mm. This makes the Blanc Pond less of an everyday wearer and more of a sport or diving piece. The Rolex, however, ticks all these boxes as it has the specifications for diving and can be easily worn with anything ranging from a t-shirt or a sharp suit. But in regards to the case material, the 50 Fathoms titanium case trumps over the Submariner's standard stainless steel case. Their case has also been finished more elegantly than the Rolex shape as it features a more sharp look and overall provides a more sleek design. The Blanc Blonde's case may feel big, however, it doesn't look as chunky as the Submariner's shape. Additionally, the Titanium would feel more lighter on the wrist and would provide that more expensive feel. Now, both pieces have luxurious bezels, with the Rolex iconic ceramic bezel being of top quality, yet the 50 Fathoms goes one step further. Blanc Pond have featured a very cool elevated bezel which makes it stand out and provides it with that extra fancy feel. Also, the markers on the bezel include a luminescent finish which is not featured on the Rolex. Talking about the dials, the Rolex has a plain black background which really lets those stunning white hour indices do all of the talking. It's so simple but still looks so good. But the 50 Fathoms dial is more complex as it has the large hour markers plus a very complex dial. The middle circle is a basic sunburst black but it's contrasted with the matte black out ring very nicely. Another feature is that the tape complication on the Blog Pond's dial is black and integrates well into the rest of the case, whilst the Submariner has a more noticeable white one. But what is questionable with the 50 Fathoms is that it has the date featured at the 4 o'clock marker which isn't strange by any means, but doesn't look quite right. An argument for placing this would be that the Blanc Pond wanted to have all 3, 6, 9 and 12 hour markers on the dial, but you could simply put it to the side of the 3 hour marker. But hey, I'm no watchmaker or designer, so I think Blanc Pond knows best. Getting back on track, another thing I like about the 50 Fathoms over the Submariner is that there is less branding and has more understated because Blanc Pond only has the brand name, model and water resistance rating on the dial. Yet Rolex has these labels plus the chronometer status and the Oyster Perpetual line, which in my opinion is too much as you don't need to put the information from the brochure onto your dial. Now let's compare the two in-house Swiss movements from each piece. Starting with the Rolex, it has a very reliable and trustworthy 3230 caliber. This automatic movement features an impressive 70 hours of power reserve and the brand's signature super ladder chronometer status, which means it only has plus minus of 2 seconds per day. But when it comes to the specifications of the movement, I think the Blanc Pond completely blows the Rolex under the water. No pun intended. The 50 Fathoms has a 1315 caliber, which is, let's say, mind blowing. This is because it has a massive 120 hours of power reserve, which is almost double that of the Submariner. It also has 35 joules and beats to a well-rounded 28,800 vibrations per hour. Another upside to the Blanc Pond is that it has the C3 case back, which allows you to see that beautifully decorated in-house caliber. This just puts it once again a step above the Rolex in regards to overall finishing and elegance. It is pleasing that both these pieces have a sturdy 300 meters of water resistance as they are both legends of the dive watch game. In regards to the bracelet, I believe the Rolex is king here as their signature oyster steel construction is proven to be a legendary strap and will always remain amazing. But the Blanc Pond also features a very nice bracelet too. But I would also prefer the design of the oyster bracelet on the Rolex. An additional feature I like about the 50 Fathoms, which I forgot to mention, was the engraved Blanc Pond text on the side of the case, which is a very nice touch. 
Both of these pieces are legends of the dive watch scene, but in regards to quality, my opinion is that the Blanc Pont is just that extra step over the Submariner. Both cost around the same, and if I had the chance to choose one for free, I would still go for the Rolex, as it would suit my midget wrists better, and I prefer the overall design. Click on the videos on the screen right now to see more awesome Rolex related videos from this channel. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing for more similar style content and it would be really appreciated too. Make sure to like and comment and thanks for watching.